Well, good morning. Welcome once again to another edition of our morning meditation. I'm the Reverend Dr. William L. Johnson, the third uh, chaplain here at Christian Hospital Northeast. And I am so glad to be able to share with you uh, these words of inspiration and encouragement. As always, we share with you these messages to encourage you along the way. We are aware uh, that life sometimes is not fair and difficulties come on every hand. And as much as we are uh, giving our best uh, to our lives, uh, sometimes things get uh, off, uh, offline and we find ourselves struggling uh, to regain our footing. And that is why we need messages and words of encouragement along the way, like signposts to give us new direction for what it is that we will find ahead of us and to remind us that we've come so far and we've done so much in our lives. So once again, we welcome you uh, and we want you to know that you are loved, you are appreciated and you're irreplaceable. This morning's meditation is entitled In the Meantime in the meantime. You know, I am aware that so many of the things that we face uh, come to us fast and we find ourselves questioning everything that we're experiencing because we want to know the one big thing that is important, why? It's not always what is happening, but it's trying to find meaning in life. And so that we often are wondering, what is it that God is doing? Or uh, we have these existential questions about what is the meaning of this thing that I'm experiencing? I, I remembered uh, taking a few moments uh, to share uh, with a patient not long ago, and she was recounting all the things that were happening to her and all the things that had happened to her in the past year. And I must say, uh, my heart almost stopped. It was horrific to think about all that this person, one individual, was enduring and going through. And she offered this really important question, one that theologians have uh, studied for years, a question of theodicy. Why does God allow such things? If God is empowered to do something about them, what is it that God is trying to get out of these moments? Is it so that we have to learn lessons that we already believe we understand? I mean, what is the meaning behind all we have experienced? In many ways and in many times, we find ourselves struggling with trying to make sense of it, and we come to this conclusion that this is not the way it's supposed to be. How many times have you uh, had that go across your mind? You might be driving down the road and you see things are crazy. People are flying by you at 100 miles an hour, and it seems that there is no way to stop that. And we ask the question, and or we rather we make the statement, this is now not how it's supposed to be. Marriages fail and families disintegrate or struggle with life, or we have these senseless acts of violence in our community, or it seems like the politicians and the government, everyone has gone plumb mad in their head, and we are always faced with the statement that this is not the way it's supposed to be. Because we have in our being a sense of a vision of the way it should be. And when what we know should be is not matching up with our reality, it leaves us in a place of ambiguity, a place of anxiety, a place of frustration. And we say, whether we utter it with our lips or if it's in our hearts or in our minds, this is not how it's supposed to be. And we are not quite sure if we'll ever get back to that place again. The pandemic has shifted us in such a way that we're not quite sure if life will ever go back to the way we've known it. And in truth, sometimes uh, some of the things that we've known and some of the things we were comfortable with or we endured, uh, we really could do without. And yet other things in our lives we miss because they anchor us and they give us a sense of our own identity and who we are right now. So I'm thinking as I share this message with you uh, that it's important to take a pause and allow you to take a moment to recount and think about the things that seem odd so that you can say that's not the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, I, I think that's important for us to think about, whether it's in our households, 
whether it's in our communities, whether it's in our, uh, our respective job uh, uh, places where we work, uh, our employment uh, uh, advancement, all the things that are around us. It leaves us with questions. And the temptation is to wish for old days, uh, like the good old days were always good. They were not. Uh, and tomorrow, as Billy Joel would say, is not as bad as it seems. Uh, it is a reminder to us that we are in flux sometimes, and our lives are in these places where we ask these important questions. It's interesting, though, and there is something I do want to share with you uh, from a passage of scripture, uh, because when we ask these questions, sometimes we think we are the only ones uh, <laughs> to come up with them uh, over the course of time. And because we are in such a very stressful time, uh, sometimes we wonder, are there any answers? And I would invite us to look back and take a look at previous generations of those who've gone on before us, who have reminded us from their wisdom, like the Sankofa bird, that we are going forward, but we're looking back, reclaiming uh, the history that has brought us thus far. Uh, the book of Habakkuk in the Bible offers these words somewhere around the third chapter and the 17th through probably the 19th verse. So I'm going to read a few of those uh, verses for us. And it says this, even though the fig trees have no blossoms and there are no grapes on the vines, and even though the olive crops fail and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. For the sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes me as sure-footed as a deer able to tread upon the heights. I love that. And why, the reason why I love it is that the writer gives us these words and says and paints a picture of how bad things have gotten. Habakkuk sees uh, that they're in an in-between place. The Assyrians had dominated them and captured them, and now the Assyrians, that page has turned, and they are in the middle of, of Israel or their people, then going back to life as normal which meant that they were having violence in the street and corruption in the in their communities and all the things that were maladies and, vi and vices for their community. And Habakkuk cries out to God, God, how long, how much sense does this make? And to Habakkuk's surprise, God says and offers what seems to be an even worse alternative. The Babylonians are coming. The Chaldeans are coming. And they're going to make things even worse. And the question is, what do you do when you're in between a rock and a hard place, a difficult space, and even a more difficult space? And why is it that we don't see hope in our future or the promise of a new day? It's coming. However, it has to go through the process. And that's what I want to leave with you here uh, today. I, I love this text from Habakkuk, and I don't want to leave you heavy in your heart because I think there's good news here. The good news is, is that the meantime is the most important time of all. Between this and that, in the meantime, is where the jewels are. And you have to be able to appreciate the meantime. That time that's in between everything else is where you'll find, here's the pun, meaning. It's important to see it. And so that the, the, the writer here, Habakkuk says, I've lost everything. There's no fruit on the vines. There's no nothing in the fields. The cattle are gone. The barns are empty. Nothing is there. And somewhere in between that, I have found a yet. And in that moment, I will praise God there. I love that because I think it's really important to pick up that the reality is that what we are experiencing in our current reality, and it is our current reality, 
And while it looks like things will never get back to normal or back to the way they were, it is breeding and bringing about a change that's necessary for a more fruitful life. But the part that comes for us, the difference is that what we project may happen in the future and what we know we've experienced in the past is this one little word called faith. And faith changes everything. It has the ability to push us to the place of not being lazy, thinking that what we are experiencing, we don't have the ability to participate in and change our future. It was the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who saw the plight of a nation and decided to insert faith that things could change, and they have. It was those like Sojourner Truth or Harriet Tubman or Frederick Douglass in the face of oppression and slavery that said, this is not the way it's supposed to be, and we're going to trust God to change it. When you don't see a way to change it, God does see a way to change it. And so you must have faith. You know, I, I love this. Uh, this. There's a passage that says the righteous must live by faith and something that we don't do much anymore. So it's important to have faith while we do several things. In the meantime, have faith while we wait. In the meantime, have faith while we wait. When I was growing up, uh, it seems like uh, the older I get, it seems like it's farther and farther away. Uh, but every now and then, I would find myself at my mom's or my grandmother's or at some uh, person's home who was a senior among us, an aunt, uh, a grand uncle, and every now and then I would find myself there while a storm was coming. And suddenly that generation would simply tell us to be still, sit down and wait. And we'd be so anxious wanting to continue to do what we were doing. No, sit down and wait. Turn off the television, turn off the radio, get off of the telephone and sit still because God is doing God's work. And while God is working, we're called to wait. I did not like that. But what I discovered is that later I learned something from my daughter in her early years uh, in elementary school. She had uh, a, a, an assignment and I was reading with her through her assignment and I discovered what lightning does. <laughs> all these years, all this gray hair, and now the loss of hair on top of my head. And I did not know at the time, I wasn't gray then, but I am now, what lightning does. And my daughter explained to me that when light thunder and lightning comes, lightning has a purpose. We don't like it. It is scary. It flashes in the sky. And like my grandmother and others said, sit down and be still. God is doing God's business. However, the lightning strikes, I learned from my daughter, to clean up the atmosphere, the toxins in the air. Lightning comes and pulls it all together in those moments, striking and cleaning up the air. And that is why my daughter, my at the time, my eight-year-old, uh, explained to me that that is why uh, we feel like the air is fresher after a storm. Wow, <laughs> what a learning moment. So sometimes we have to wait and let God clean up the atmosphere, if you will, and set things in order for us to move on with the next stages in our lives. And so in the meantime, things that did not look like they were promising, after some prayer and some faith that God would handle it, it turns out better than we ever could have imagined. Not only, it's the second point I want to leave with you, should we wait uh, uh, and find ourselves uh, by faith waiting in the meantime, but we also by faith should work in the meantime. There are some things that we are called to do, and waiting is one, 
but working is another. In the meantime, there's no sense in sitting around complaining about everything that goes on negatively. Pull up your sleeves and get busy doing work. Will it make every bit of the difference for you? Maybe not, but what it will do is get your uh, being, your person, your body, your mind, your spirit in the place where you're prepared uh, and in shape for what's going to happen next. In other words, there are some conditioning mechanisms for your next life that need to happen in this one. There are some things that are happening in our lives that are preparing us for what life will be like after this pandemic has passed. And it's important for us not to simply wait for it to pass, but to be active and get ready for the next steps of our lives. And that, my dear beloved, takes faith. It takes faith to get out of bed in the morning, faith to make your way to your job, faith to believe that things are going to change, Faith to be able to advocate for others when the whole world seems to have forgotten them. Faith to be able to try to call for justice, even when there seems to be no one who wants to live a just life. It takes faith, but it also takes work. And you have to work until the change comes. In other words, you do what is necessary to make your way in the direction, even if you know that the doors are not open, you still have to go to the door to knock on it. And that is the part where we find ourselves with our families and with our loved ones, with your children and with your parents, that you still have to exercise the practices of faith and the practices of love and the practices of friendship and the practices of family and the practices of camaraderie and the practices of professionalism in the workplace. What I found during the pandemic is that sometimes we start cutting short on our levels of how serious we are and diligent we are to be professional. And it's important that we do it more now than ever before because people are counting on us to live up to that standard. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't have some difficulties, but you work and you wait because this is the part I want to leave with you most of all. And I know this is a longer message, please forgive me. This is important, that having faith in the meantime means that having faith to not only work and wait, but also witness in those moments. Well, what is a witness? I'm not talking about evangelism here. I'm talking about telling people about what you've seen and what you know. Yeah, about sharing our stories. It's about knowing that we're not isolated because we overcome difficulty by sharing with one another. I, I found that good stories can make you laugh and they can also make you cry. But when you find that you are sharing stories with other people, you, dif you discover that your common story will bring you through. Yeah, uh, I think it's the reason why so many people are attached to social media. They are looking for other stories to verify what they feel on the inside. And I want to encourage us as we do so to do so by faith. The faith witness is this. I don't know how things are going to be, Habakkuk says. I don't see any fruit on the vine. I don't see any food in, in the cover. I don't see any cattle in, in, uh, in, in the barn. And I don't see how things are going to change. And I don't have a good outlook about how that's going to look. However, yet, I am going to take a few moments in my life to praise God anyway. I found that profound. I found that a blessing. Because in doing so, he says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. And that God will be my strength and will make me sure-footed as a deer able to tread upon the heights. I can make it because I have found faith in this witness. And I think it's good that we do so sharing with other people that I too am experiencing difficulty, but I am going to trust that we're going to come out of it. And they're gonna start watching you to see whether you do. And when you do, 
they'll discover a camaraderie with you and trust just the same. We need that and we need each other. So I wanted to leave you with these me this message. Uh, I don't know why I took so long to share it, but here it is. In the meantime, between here and there, and when things are not the way they are supposed to be, and they're not the way they should be, and you're not quite where you're going to be, that in between meantime is so important because you ought to rejoice because it's giving you a chance to be able to make a difference by faith. I know faith, whatever your faith tradition is, whatever your background is, we get up every morning and start our day living by faith. I want to encourage you to do that. And it doesn't mean that everything is nice and it doesn't mean that things are working out the way we want, but what it will do is change our perspective and give us a different look at how we are joined together with others along the way. I want you to be able to know that as you're going through the course of this week and through the rest of the morning, uh, that you are loved, appreciated, and you're irreplaceable. And even if it feels difficult right now, be encouraged. We're joining and walking together in the meantime. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Uh, and I am praying for blessings upon your life and your future as you journey. Thanks so much.